Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I should apologise uh, to start with. Um, I'm an economist. Uh, and economists are not uh, famous for their interest in compassion. But I do think that what we're discussing today uh, is the most important issue uh, facing society, except perhaps for global warming. And I do think that uh, we have got a long way to go if we want a society uh, where people feel that other people are on their side rather than a source of, of threat. That's how I would define a compassionate society. Uh, we're not doing well. Uh, as you may know, uh, there's a famous question which has been asked in a number of uh, surveys. Uh, do you, I, maybe we'll take a vote. Do you think that most other people can be trusted? Uh, who says yes? I should have done it the other way around. Who says no? <laughs> now, you are completely atypical. <laughs> you are not, even the British population 40 years ago, when 60% of people said yes, now it's 30% say yes. There's been the same fall in the United States. This is, I think, the most uh, severe uh, statement we can make about uh, the trends in our culture. Of course, in parallel with that, uh, we have something like a doubling uh, of the number of young people uh, who say this is... Uh, adolescents who say who are found to be uh, in response to diagnostic questions uh, emotionally disturbed uh, comparing 1970 with the present day uh, these of course are phenomena that uh, mirror each other uh, and I think that the problem really is that we're not not offering uh, young people any proper vision of, of what could be the purpose of their lives um, I think if we are offering them a purpose, it's that you have to do better than other people. And that's not a very good basis for a good society or even a happy society uh, because, of course, if one person does better, if A does better than B, B does worse than A. It's, it's what we call in our economic jargon a zero-sum game. The total can't be changed, however hard people try. This is not a kind of uh, a proper... Uh, uh, kind of effort that we should be encouraging. We should be encouraging people to engage in what you could call positive sum games, where uh, you are getting uh, happiness from uh, uh, generating happiness uh, at the same time uh, in other people. Uh, and of course, a situation, a society based on a positive sum relationships uh, means that, uh, you know, if I am uh, doing good to you, that's good for you. Uh, but it's also good for me, and I think probably that was discussed earlier today when I, I wasn't here. Plenty of evidence about it from the ancient wisdom. Uh, has Shanti Deva been quoted yet? Uh, I, I probably won't get it right, but I think he said that uh, the person who seeks the happiness of others becomes happy, and the person who seeks his own happiness becomes unhappy. Uh, and this is also confirmed, as you know, by a lot of uh, work in neuroscience which shows uh, the positive uh, reward uh, which people get from uh, compassionate behaviour. So if we were to look, um, as some of us do, we do in our research centre, at what are the main determinants of happiness we do in that World Happiness Report, uh, there are really two categories. On the outside, the main determinants of happiness are the quality of your social relationships uh, with the, within the family always very, very important or with close ones uh, at work and with the uh, community where you live. And then the other, of course, internal, key internal determinant of happiness uh, is your mental health. And these are really complements of each other because, uh, as people have said many times today already, um, if you're not at peace with yourself, you can't really give much uh, to other people. So the, the issue is how could we build a society which had both better relationships and better mental health? And I think there we have uh, the power of our social institutions. We could have better social institutions, which was contributing more to that. Uh, and, of course, the power of ourselves. So let me say a bit about... Uh, social institutions. Uh, I know a, lot, a number of teachers here. I'll say something about schools, something about the health service, 
uh, and something about employers. Uh, those are the main social institutions that actually contribute to our well-being. Uh, and, and then something about what we contribute ourselves, just briefly. Okay, well, if I start with schools, the work which we've been doing, um, which you can do if you take the, the cohort studies where you know uh, you have all the children who were born in a certain week and you follow them through their, their lives, and you try to predict uh, which of them will be the most satisfied adults in uh, adulthood, uh, and you then look at various aspects of their development as children. You look at their intellectual development um, of great interest uh, to uh, the Secretary of State for Health, for Education, and you look at their uh, emotional development. You will find that their emotional development is about four times more important a predictor of how satisfying a life they lead as adults. Uh, when compared with their intellectual development as children. And yet, we're putting all the emphasis on intellectual development and so little on emotional development at the moment in our schools. So our schools uh, have got to be concerned uh, as much with uh, building of character as uh, building of competence. And I think the key issue for every child uh, is what kind of person do you want to be? Uh, I visited one of the schools that calls itself a value school. This was West Kidlington School. And that, that's a question they always ask. And if the child is getting into trouble, that's where you start the discussion. Uh, what kind of a person do you want to be? And I think the answer should be, I want to be the kind of person who creates uh, more happiness in the world and, and less misery. That should be the purpose which we start discussing with our children at a very, very young age. How would you choose how you spent your time, what kind of uh, job you thought of getting in later life, etc.? Uh, how can I contribute uh, to making the world a, a happier place in my own little way? Uh, so we, we want our children to be more concerned with what they uh, give than what they get. Uh, and yet the rhetoric, certainly, of, of ministers, but uh, I think even of some teachers, I'm sure none of them here, is if you want to get on, this is what you have to do. Uh, this is a terrible uh, way uh, to educate our children. So how to change it? Obviously, we have to change the ethos of the schools uh, so that there's more focus on those kind of issues. Uh, <clears throat> but also, I do think that there is a role for more dedicated and specialised teaching, particularly in secondary schools, uh, 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 around these issues um, and increasingly we're getting to a situation where we can do this on the basis of evidence rather than just uh, flying by the seat of our pants. Uh, the uh, Roots of Empathy programme is a very good example of a programme which has been really seriously evaluated and we do know that it makes a serious difference to the children who go through it. That's at the primary level. Uh, I just mentioned experience I've had at the secondary level with the Penn Resilience Program but based on positive psychology and the work of, of Martin Seligman, definitely contributing uh, to the reduction of depression uh, and improvement of behaviour of, of young people, but very short. Uh, and I think we shouldn't expect too much of very short programmes which take 15 hours or something like that. Uh, we should be talking about the whole curriculum. Uh, so what uh, I'm involved in now with some others is trying to develop a, a, a four-year curriculum in, in PSHE, Personal Social and Health Education, based on uh, evidence-based materials that have been already subjected to randomised control trials, um, but when put together uh, would amount to a, a really powerful uh, education in social and emotional learning, uh, sex and relationships, uh, and healthy living. And I think if we had such a curriculum, we could then really argue that this should be a specialist subject. It shouldn't be something which is just handed to somebody with a gap in the timetable. Uh, I know there are many dedicated PSAT teachers, but a lot of the teaching is not done by them, um, but by others. Uh, and it should be done by a mixture of specialists and non-specialists, but we want some specialists there who are really expert in it and have been trained in it at, at university. And if I'm looking for missionaries, 
I mean, we're all missionaries here, aren't we? But <laughs> we're looking for an army of missionaries to go into schools. If we could create that as a proper subject in secondary schools, it might make them into more civilised uh, places. I would like to think that. Let me move on to the health service, uh, because I think, going back to what I said at the beginning, we're trying to create a world with better social human relationships and better mental health. Uh, our health service actually is a, a very powerful institution which could play a lead role uh, towards the promotion of certainly mental health, but also, I think, of good relationships, particularly within the family. So if you go through the stages of life, I would like to see the health service taking responsibility for uh, at least the following. First, improving the quality of parenting. Uh, now we have antenatal classes, which are mainly uh, fixed around the physical process of childbirth and maybe uh, childcare after birth of a physical kind. We need parenting classes that are at least as fixed around the emotional uh, development of the child and the impact of the child on the relationship between the spouses because all the research shows that one of the most important things for children is not how they relate to their parent but how the parents relate to each other. This is often underestimated by parents. We had that in the Good Childhood Inquiry. Extraordinary uh, difference. I think 70% of children said that it was a really important factor how the parents got on with each other for the child. And, uh, and only 30% of parents thought it was an important factor for the child. So a big difference there. So quality of parenting. If we're looking for social levers to improve it, the health service has got to be our main lever, of course, working in conjunction with the third sector. Then this next point uh, is the equality of the relationship between the parents. Uh, at the moment, there's very little help uh, of a fully professional kind available for uh, parents in conflict. Uh, and yet we have now recommended by NICE uh, something called behavioral couples therapy, evaluated to have be shown to what effect it has on, uh, on relationships, practically unavailable. It's recommended by now, it's practically unavailable, like so many therapies uh, for uh, the psychological uh, side of things within the NHS. Uh, we need to really build that up. We need to really treat domestic violence as a central problem in our society, uh, rather than uh, something which we either can't talk about or we have no professional uh, way of handling. Then going on to more obvious features, child mental health. We have camp services which are too difficult to access, not sufficient outreach, and not sufficiently uh, evidence-based, uh, so we can improve our child mental health services. Uh, incidentally, we should be in uproar of the fact that half of them are being cut at the moment. Um, and then, of course, we, have, we should have much better services for um, depression and anxiety uh, in adult life. Um, this, this accounts for a quarter of all the illness in our society, depression and anxiety. I mean, it actually constitutes a quarter of all morbidity on, on any uh, standard WHO uh, uh, assessment. And yet we spend about 3% of the NHS resources on depression and anxiety for uh, adults. We have managed to get the improved access to psychological therapy programs uh, going, uh, increasing the output, but it's a huge battle and we need every one of you uh, to support us. And uh, please, if it's not satisfactory, write to your MP or your local councillor or your PCT or your clinical commissioning group. This is a, a, a big battle to be fought. So that, that's uh, mental health and relationships um, in the way that the NHS could improve them. Um, but I think uh, uh, that, that it's important to relate this to the moral dimension of what we're talking about uh, today because the, the fundamental problem in mental illness, as we know, is that you become, become obsessed with yourself. I mean, that is, that is in, in a sense, the constitutive element in it. Um, 
And therefore, everything which has been talked about so far today, how you can come out of yourself and lose yourself by contributing to the life of others is, is deeply relevant to the improvement of, of mental health. Let, let me come on very briefly to employers. We spend a quarter of our time, waking time, at work. Um, and I think that employers can contribute enormously to our uh, enjoyment of life or misery uh, of life. Um, unfortunately, they have been subjected to a very bad influence by uh, the profession that I belong to. Uh, economists are quite right when they say that we want competition between organisations. That is they, they, uh, in the interest of everybody. And you only have to look at the Soviet system to see the, the, the horrible results in terms of, of uh, not only productivity but customer service and consideration that come from extreme monopoly uh, of any organisation. Um, but economists made a terrible mistake in, in then spilling over from competition between organisations to competition between colleagues. This is very undesirable that colleagues should be focused on competing with each other. They should be focused on contributing uh, to the uh, work of the organisation. And we've introduced horrible systems of performance-related pay and so on that put one worker against another, often not very efficient and certainly not conducive to uh, compassionate behaviour. Um, so so we, we, we need, of course, uh, more ethical firms, ethical in their atmosphere at work and, of course, ethical in their dealings with their, their customers. So just take it, taking our institutions, uh, we need a more altruistic uh, society uh, to which these institutions uh, can contribute. And I just wanted to say that I don't think the human race will survive uh, unless we become more altruistic because uh, we're not going to solve the climate change problem uh, by mutually binding international agreements. Uh, it, it's, it's not going to happen that way. It, it's only going to happen because individual countries feel that they ought to do this thing. And if enough of them feel they ought to do this thing uh, in the common interest, uh, that is how it will come about. And in fact, of course, the whole of morality is about how to get the right result, not by uh, agreement between people, but because people do it because they think that's what they should do. Which brings me, finally, to individuals. Uh, the um, Action for Happiness, you've all got your, your little cards, uh, was founded uh, now about 18 months ago. Uh, the central thing is the pledge on, the, on this, this side of the card. I will try to create more happiness and less unhappiness in the world around me. So all the members uh, take this pledge and then they uh, proceed to use the materials of the movement to try and implement it. Uh, we've got 24,000 members. Um, currently, uh, most of them are related <laughs> through the web rather than face-to-face. Uh, but we're trying to now build face-to-face -face relationships as well because I think what is quite obvious, uh, we all, all know it, it's been known throughout the, the ages by all preachers, uh, that it's difficult to be good and it's easier to be good if there's some other people uh, trying to do the same thing. And so you need to form groups and that is what we are now uh, trying to do. So uh, please everybody, it doesn't take you very long, go into our our website and, and join our movement uh, and um, we will do what we can to uh, promote the cause that this uh, event is about. I'll just end with a quick story. Uh, our director, is Mark's not here is he? Is Mark here? No. Oh yes. He's somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> when we appointed Mark, uh, we interviewed many excellent candidates and one of them had been into the internet uh, to see if there was any other organization which had the word happiness in the title. Uh, and this was the answer that came back on his screen. Your search for happiness 
has produced no results. <laughs>